everyone, my name is Valerie and I am the Outreach Coordinator for Future Energy Systems. The book we're reading today is If Polar Bears Disappeared by Lily Williams. This is the Arctic. It's an ecosystem in the far northern regions of the globe. Few animals call this land home. The ones that do live here are strong, tough, slow, and sometimes hard to see. Polar bears are believed to have descended from the common brown bear about 400,000 years ago. As brown bears moved farther and farther north, they evolved to fit their new environments. Over time, they became perfectly adapted to the icy Arctic tundra, using the sea ice in traveling, hunting, denning, and reproducing. Even their white fur is an adaption to this snowy, treeless environment. Although they're the apex predators in the frozen north, polar bears are still vulnerable to threats like pollution and habitat loss. But the biggest threat to polar bears and other animals in their ecosystem is the melting of sea ice because of climate change. If too much of the sea ice melted, Female polar bears couldn't get enough food to build the layer of fat they need before giving birth to cubs in their dens. Without enough food, polar bears would be weaker than they should be, and females would have fewer cubs. Some of the cubs wouldn't be healthy enough to survive. The lack of available food would also cause hungry polar bears to travel outside their natural habitat, forcing them to compete with other predators. These difficulties would cause the polar bear population to decline, and before long, it could dwindle to none. If too much of the sea ice melted, other Arctic species would be affected as well. If polar bears became extinct, the number of ringed seals, polar bears' main source of food, could initially rise. However, because ring seals also rely on sea ice to mate, fish, rest, and give birth, they would struggle to adapt to the changing environment too. If too much of the sea ice melted, ocean predators like orcas would be able to catch more seals, which would cause seal populations to decline even further. With too few seals as prey, orcas could move south disrupting the balance in the predator-prey relationships in those waters. If the changes in the Arctic become irreversible, even more species of plants and animals would be affected. If too much of the sea ice melted, the Arctic North would grow even warmer and the landscape would change permanently. Shrubs that were once hidden under snow would be exposed and grow larger crowding out tundra's usual mosses, fungi, and grasses. Many of these plant species that are not used to growing in this changing landscape could disappear, causing herbivores like caribou to struggle to find enough food. Without enough snow, subnivian mammals like lemmings, who make their dens in the snow, would lose their homes, exposing them to the harsh weather and predators, and decreasing their populations. With many of the herbivores gone, non-apex predators such as the snowy owl and arctic fox would be the next to lose their main food source. Higher temperatures would also alter the reproductive patterns of insects, which in turn could disrupt the migration and breeding patterns of northern birds who eat insects. Effects like these would begin in the Arctic and spread like a web into different environments. Snow stays cold because its white color reflects the heat of the sun, sending it back into space. Because bodies of water like the ocean are darker than snow and ice, they absorb the heat of the sun, which warms the water. Then in a cycle, the warm water causes more sea ice to melt. This cycle could continue until all the ice has thawed. Then, 
Neighboring ecosystems could change and their animals could disappear. This chain event would roll onward, affecting all the different ecosystems, from the redwood forests, to the hot deserts, to the frozen Arctic, until we are no longer able to stop it. Fortunately, we still have time to save polar bears and slow the loss of Arctic ice. Scientists and researchers are working hard to find solutions and educate the public about how ecosystems and organisms are connected to one another. The best way for you to help is to learn everything you can about climate change and how it affects environments like the Arctic. Taking action will lessen its devastating effects. And maybe we will find that the answer to saving the polar bears has been right in front of us all along. And at the end of the book, there's a glossary uh, and some more information. So I'll put pictures of the glossary and this information at the bottom under the video. But let's read how you can help save polar bears. You can help save the Arctic by making environmentally friendly decisions to reduce climate change, burn less fossil fuels, take public transit, bike, walk, or carpool, and be mindful about how much gasoline you use. Get your electricity from an alternative power source like solar or wind. Turn off lights and unplug other electrical devices when they're not being used. Make sure light bulbs and appliances that you do use are energy efficient. Recycle your trash and purchase products that have less packaging. Look to see if you can participate in your community recycling or composting programs. Set your home's thermostat lower in the winter and higher in the summer. Eat locally produced sustainable food wherever possible. Check out nearby farmers markets and food co-ops. Buy products made closer to your home. Eat less meat. One pound of beef takes almost 2,000 gallons of water to produce, but a pound of vegetables takes much less. Consider adopting Meatless Mondays. Tell your government representatives that you want a renewable energy-based future. And finally, encourage people to talk about the environment. Speak out about climate change to spread the word. And that is If Polar Bears Disappeared by Lily Williams. What did you guys think? I spent a lot of summers working in the far north in Canada studying birds and land reclamation and it is a beautiful ecosystem and it's really important we protect that area. So check out the activities below to learn more and keep watching Future Energy Systems videos. Bye! Thank you so much for watching Future Energy Systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.